the camera. Let me just reload for the camera again. All right. So So we look at the class node, this should be page 126. All right, so page one to six. This is thermodynamics. Today is 4, 23, 18. And this should be like the day, lecture 23. So I think for today you are a homework due, no? So basically for the last, I, mean, I think almost for the last two weeks, or including last week and this week, we're just doing problems to practice for the exam. So I printed the solution of the homework problems. So which one you want to do? Before we do it, let me just look first at the solution, see if, it's, if, it's, if it is an uh, exam type problem, okay? I'd rather not waste time with you guys. So again, I hope you did it before coming to class, that way this would be like a study class, no? So did you have any problem on one of them? If not, we can go and find different problems, okay? Yes? Number 112. 112, let me see what that is. Okay, I'm kind of looking at the solutions, if there's something strange, doesn't look anything strange, just looks long, no? All right, so let's do that one, okay? So problem 112, uh, 612. So let's see what we can do like we always do. Six, seven, six, so wait. Okay, I don't know. Five. So six, twelve. We'll get there. Okay, so it looks like that's the figure for six, twelve. All right, so let me do the figure for 612. And then I, I read the problem, OK? <coughs> OK. So basically, we have two turbines. So the rows of the turbine is always to create power, so each one of them, this one, power turbine one is 10,000 kilowatts, power created by turbine two is, question mark, where are you going? Sorry. Sorry for what? What's your name? All right. All right. Attendance then, we're going to do now. So, great. We're going to create a new one then. So, 
So we have the power, so there is air. Going in, uh, we know the initial temperature is 1400 Kelvin. Oh, you see. At an initial pressure of. Oh, I don't think I. Okay, you can do that at the end. An initial pressure of 20 bars. Okay, so all that is going through the turbine, then it's exiting the turbine. And all this stuff is going to get into what is called a reheater. Oops, so maybe yeah, a bit too much. Should be a bit bigger, but it doesn't matter. So we go here. Maybe it's through a reheater, so this is two. Uh, we know about 2, T2 is 1100 Kelvin, P2 is 5 bar. Okay, so this goes to a reheater. Oh, that's strange. I would really guess that the pressure would be the same. They said drop in pressure. Okay. So we go 3, P3 equal 4.5 bars. T3 is one of the unknowns. And then we're going to have here 4, where T4 is 980 Kelvin. Before you go to 1 bar. My figure is not going to be pretty, okay? So we are here. And now, maybe I'm going to do it in blue and orange. <coughs> then we have another circuit here, also with air. This is 5 and 6. So we know T5 is 1480 Kelvin. P5, 1.35 bars, and N5 is 1,200 kilogram minute. T6 is 1,200 Kelvin. P6 is 1 bar. So it looks like we need to find the power. I'm guessing we're going to need to find the mass T3, and I'm guessing we're going to have to find the mass flow of air coming in through 1, 2, 3, 4, no? I mean, I'm guessing. Let's see. The we need to find T3, the power output of the second one, and then the rate of entropy production in, in each of the turbines and heat exchanger, OK? Using results of part C, place a component in a rank order beginning with the component contributing most to the most to inefficient operation of the overall system. Okay. So where's the figure? Now we lost it. Next page, no? Here's the page. So let's keep the figure for a minute here. So my guess here is in order to find T3, what do we need to know over here? We need to know what is the mass flow of air coming in, no? Okay? So maybe my guess will be, let's do a strategy that if we consider the turbine as our control volume, okay? Looks like we know everything except for the mass flow, no? So probably we can go using this as a control volume, we can find what is the mass flow, and we know the mass flow will be M1, will be equal to M2, will be equal to M3, will be equal to M4, okay? Then after that, I'm guessing in order to find T3, we need to take... I'm not sure, but I'm guessing just this part as the control system. Uh, or we can take everything. We'll find out. Let's go step by step, okay? To find T3, we can maybe... We might have to use the whole system. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm guessing, okay? Because otherwise, you, need to, you first need to calculate the Q over here. <coughs> All right, so let's do, let's do the first thing. All right, so system, let's say, would be turbine one. If I go to the figure, let's say this would be so let's say this would be system one. Okay, so for the turbine, we can write down what? I'll go a little bit faster than usual, okay? We can write down what would be the uh, first principle of thermodynamics. So in general, what do I say is Q plus power, not dot, plus in this case, what would that be? M, just say M1, H1, and that would be equal to what? M. one h2 because we know m1 equal h2 no okay you can put it over here if you want on the side m1 equal m2 all right for this one so in this case do we have any heat no okay so we know the power so this would be equal to what M dot or M1 dot equal to H2 minus H1 equal to the power turbine 1. So we'll have that the mass flow 1 equal mass flow 2 equal mass flow 3 equal mass flow 4 equal to what? Turbine 1 divided by H2 minus H1. Okay, so in this problem, we know that the power generated by the turbine is what? 10,000 kilowatt. Is that better? Yeah. All right, now, from where can we find H1 and H2? Table, so let's see if I can fit it here. So, Johnny, what are those tables? I think it's on the 20s, no? 822. So, it's 359, the page for this one. If I remember, tables 84, 89, 815, 824, so I pass it. 822, oh, and this is English, okay, not good. So 822, we know the temperatures, no? So what's the first temperature? 1400. So what should be then H? So table A22 at T1 equals 1400, we get H1 equal to what? 1515.42, T2 equal to 1100, H2 will be equal to 1161 61.07 So if you do the calculation what do you guys find? I mean, I could look at the solution. I have them here, but I'd rather do it with you, okay?
What did you find? Okay, and somebody. That's also what they have over here. But I want you to do it, okay? It's not that I don't want to copy. So if you do the numerical substitution, you should find that M, let's say, M1 is equal to 28.22 kilograms per second. Okay, so next, next what do we need to find? So the next thing we need to find is T3. So I think here maybe we can try to take just the heat exchanger, no? Because we know T2, we know all those temperatures, no? So it looks like if we just take the heat exchanger, so system 2, You could take everything as well, but heat exchanger, but I think that should work. I don't see why that should not work. So this is our system two. P2 5 bar, P3 4.5 bar, T3 is what we need to find, and then here at the bottom, five, we know T5, 1480, P5, 1.35, M5, 1200 kilograms minute, and then 6, we know T6 equal to 1200, Calvin and P6 equals to 1 bar. So over here I see two different ways to do the problem. Because it's R and R, no? Okay. So for that system, for the system two, we're gonna write down again the equation Q plus work plus so what is going in? We know M1 equal to M2, no? So what's going in? M1 times what? H2. H2, and what else? H5. And then what is coming out? M1, H3, and what else is coming out? M5, H6, because we know M6 equal to M5. So now, over here, 
Is there any heat going in or out this system? If it's not in the figure, there is not nothing, no? Is there any work created by this system? Done or created? So basically here, so here I see two ways to do this problem. Okay? What would be the two ways to do the problem? Yeah, go ahead. So we can we know we can find the H, we can find H three and then go to the table and see what would be the temperature for H three. Now that's what it did on the solution. But what would be another way to do it? Anyone? What do we know about the air? Is it's an ideal gas, so you can assume so the the state is never going to change, no? So we could go to the tables and try to find some type of average CP value, no? Between what we have 1100, 1480, 1800, 1480, no? Find an average CP values, and then we could just solve for the temperature. That would be an approximation, no? So which way you want to do it? So the other way is the one of the H or the one of the CPs? With the CPs, because the H is going to have it on the solution here, okay? So I think it's better if we do the one of the CPs. So first, let's see first if we can find those CPs on the tables. So I have not much of an idea, so uh, anyone can help me here for CPs, if there's any table? Okay, so look at that, that table 820 is CP, CVs, and Ks for specific values, no? So what do they have over here? They go all the way to 1,000? Yeah? So you know what? 1.003, 1.1. I mean, you want to use the table, I will put 1.142, but let's, can we just say it's 1.15? It's an approximation, no? Don't be the end of the world. So let's say, so I'm going to say like from table 820. Do they have all the temperatures? No. Okay, so from table, I will say here table 820. CP estimated to 1.15 units. Kilojoules, kilograms Kelvin, okay? And obviously that value is estimated. You understand what I did over here, no? Okay? So now if we have this, so what do we know? In order to know that, we know that H basically is almost proportional then to CPT. Okay? So that the equation above, so let's say equation star. Becomes what? M1 T1, no, M1 T2 plus M5 T5 equal to M1. Uh, ooh, I forgot the CPs. All right, here we go. Oh, but it doesn't matter because the CPs will cancel out. We don't need the CPs. Oh, can this be done this way or then? I don't know. Let's try because I'm not that 100% sure. It will be M1 CP T2 plus M5 CPT5 equal to M1 CPT3 plus M5 CPT6. So with this approximation, we don't even need the CPs. Looks like, no? Let's see. So basically here, 
we need to solve for t3. So if we divide everything by m1, what do we get? t2 plus m5 over m1 t5 equals to t3 plus m5 over m1 t6. So if, uh, so if I solve for T3, T3 will be equal to what? T2 plus M5 over M1 T5 minus T6. Is that correct? So let's see what happens. So in that equation, we know T2 is 1100, T5 is 1480, T6 is 1200. Now we need to be careful because M1, what is M1? We calculate to be 28.22 kilograms per second. But what do we know about M5? Is 1200 kilograms per minute. So that will be how many kilograms per second? 20 kilograms per second. So if you do the calculations, what do you get? One thousand two hundred and ninety three. Okay. Yeah. So the solution given by here, if you want to look at it, is one thousand, I don't know if you can read it, but one thousand three hundred and one point five. And they did a lot more work, no? looking at the tables because here you don't even need the CP at the end it will cancel out did you understand what I did for the solution to do it differently I mean pretty close no so the assumption that the properties do not change much when one substance stay in one state we can say that is valid All right, so I think next is to find all those changes in entropy, no? So, what do we need to find? Change in entropy for the turbine, or do we need to solve for something else? Oh, we need to solve first for the power of the second turbine. All right, so now that we did this, I think it's pretty clear what would be the approach now in order to solve for the power of this one. What would be our system? would be turbine 2, no? Okay? And then we go ahead and we solve again. So let's say system 3. Would be turbine 2. I forgot to put the 2. So I do quick another figure. So we need to find power work turbine 2, 3, and 4. So we calculated P3, we know is what? 4.5 bars. T3, we just calculated to be 1298. Calvin, we know P4. 
is one bar T4 is 980 Calvin so we can say this will be our system 3 Okay, in this problem, what can we do? Can we do the same thing as we did before? I mean, basically my question is, okay, so we write down for this one, Q dot plus work dot plus what is going in? M1 H3, what is coming out? M1 H4, okay? Okay, do we have any heat? So really this is work turbine 2. But what I want to say is that could we do the same thing for the CPs? But this time we need to keep it, not the CP. Could we go and again use the CP so we could, we could go and use the H, no? So which way do you want to do it? CPs, T or the H this time? H to change, okay. So this one we have power turbine 2 will be equal to m dot 1 h4 h4 minus h3 so i'm guessing I'm not going to interpolate, I'll tell you right now. So let's see. The two temperatures are 1298. T4 is equal to what? 980. <coughs> so we go again to table A20, I think it was A22. Table A twenty two for T equal nine eight. We have H equal to what? One thousand twenty three. So that means that H four is one thousand twenty three point twenty five. And for H three. You are more than welcome to interpolate, but if it was me doing the problem, what would I take? 1300, okay? So personally, I would say, so then, uh, approximately. So could you just round down to like 1395, if you really wanted to? What do you mean by 1395? Oh, yeah, it's fine with me. I don't, I'm not going to die for that again. 1395.97. You know, I'm, I'm strict about the process. I'm not that strict about the values, okay? Okay, so we're going to do this one. So we're going to do this one. Okay, so we're going to do this one. I mean, what is going to change the answer? Not much, no? So basically, if you do the, so M1 is 28.22, so... If you do the calculation, what do you get? Negative 10,500. Negative 10,500 and? What do they have here? 10,570. I can live with it. And that would be kilowatts. So that is negative, what does that mean? Is that, is that a good sign that is negative? Yeah, because it means that it's coming out, no? Okay? Uh, oh, sorry. Negative 10,518. 
Here they have negative, I mean, they have positive because the different sign conversion, 10,570. Okay? All right, so now we need to find the change in entropy in the turbines and the heat exchanger. Okay? Okay, so for the change of entropy, what should we do? This is the long part. You need to show me that you understand the material, no? So this is, what type of system is this? So we're going to have what? Neglecting kinetic potential energy. We have Q plus work will be equal to what? DU. Then we know that delta Q basically over T equal to DS. So that means delta Q, which is approximately Q, will be equal to what? T D S, no? So combining those two equations, what do we get? T D S plus work equals to D U. I'm going a bit faster, okay? What is the expression for the work? <laughs> Minus PDV. So if we do this, we find the first TDS relation, which is TDS equals DU plus PDV. We did this one, I think, a couple of times last class. So now, here we deal with open systems. So are we interested in U or H? H. So in order to switch this one to the expression, what do we know? We know H equal U plus PV. So what would be the H equal to? DU plus PDV plus V DP. I substitute this DU where? Into this equation. So what do we get? We get TDS equal to what? Uh, so then will be DU will be equal to what? DH minus PDV minus VDP plus PDV. This one cancel with this one. So we end up with the second TDS relation which is TDS equal to DH minus VDP. Okay, third time at least that I do this, and no problem. Eh? So probably I did it like four times. So then, what is that? We using the ideal gas relation, which is what PV equal to RT. What is V equal to? RT over P. So I can rewrite this expression as what TDS equal to DH minus. RT DP over P and for an ideal gas DH is basically equal to what? 
CPDT. So I go two step. Oh no, okay, I'm not going to do two step at once. So now I divide each side by T. So what do I get? CP dt over T minus R. dp over p. So now for air, this is really just for air, okay? What is CPDT over T more or less equal to? Remember those S upper sum naught. So really, what you're going to have here, you're going to have that, let's say, change in entropy is equal to what? Minus R log of what? P final over T initial. Okay, guys, I don't know how to be more clear, but you need to know this, no? So if we use, okay, let me stop over here. I completely understand that for some of you, this could be right now going a bit on top of the head, no? But we have done this four times that I'm pretty sure. The same division. So this is something you need to know how to do. You need to know how to do it if we're going to deal with an, if we deal with an open system, we need to use <coughs> this type of relation, the DH, no? The TDS relation with DH. But if we were dealing with a closed system, we're dealing with what? With the DUs. Okay? So I'll be, uh, so anyway, and because it's air, which I don't like about the air, we need to deal with this S upper, okay? Or, or what could we do? You want to do it the other way? Or if I, if I don't want to use the tables, then this would be equal, more or less equal to what? Really what should be this? If CP is constant, this becomes what? Yeah, I'm doing T final, T initial, minus R log, P final over P initial, no? So let's see, which one of these two you want to use? Personally, I know which one I would use, no, but... We could use either one. Uh, the one they use on the solution is this one, because they want to use the tables. If we don't want to use the tables, we could use this one, yes or no? So which one of these two do you want to use? Want to use the second one? So let's use the second one with what? CP we say was basically 1.15, no? All right? And if we do a mistake, we do a mistake. So let's use this general expression over here. And let's see. Okay. So CP we say is equal to 1.15. What is R? R is equal to R bar over the molar mass. So it's what, 8.314, no? Divided by 28.97, whatever that value is. So before we do it, if we needed to find the change of entropy for the first turbine. Then what could we say? The total change in entropy would be equal to what? Cp log of T2 over T1, no? Minus R of what? Five bars divided by 20. Yeah? So let's do that for the two 
for the two of them and let's see what we find. So 130, so let's say turbine one. Delta S turbine one will be equal to what? Let me just rewrite the full expression. It will be CP log of T2 over T1 minus R log P2 over P1. So for the first one, let me just do it. So it will be 1.15 log of 1100 divided by 1400 minus what is R? Well, 8.314 divided 28.97 log of what? P2 is 5 divided by 20. So 1 4. So what do you get for the turbine one? Okay, let me see what they got here. I mean, what was going to be small? Uh, what do you get? Oh, I did one mistake here, which is we're going to get the same thing. What's the mistake I've done here? Yes, because this is one of these ones. Uh, so sorry for that, guys. Uh, huh, where should I put it? <laughs> I mean, you know what? Who cares about the mass flow? It's just, it's just a constant, no? At the end of the day, all right? You can multiply the solution of the solution manual has the mass flow. So what do you get without the mass flow? Zero point. Zero point one to one. Okay. If you multiply that by 28.22, what do you get? Okay, here they get 3.19, so we're good. So I just keep it this one, okay? So now, is it good that is that the value is positive? We'd be in trouble if it was negative, no? Okay. So now we could do the same thing for turbine two. So for turbine two will be CP log of what? T3, so T4 over T3 minus R log P4 over P3. And I'm going to write over here uh, you could multiply solution by mass flow M1, and this will give you how much was was it? Three point. No, but for the first one. Three point four. Okay. And then for the second one, what do you get then? Without multiplying by the mass flow. Zero point 
zero or zero point one zero eight? Zero point one zero eight. Okay. Yeah. And if you multiply by m by m one. So it will be lower than the other one, 3.06. Okay, and finally, for the heat exchanger, so in this case, yeah, maybe we should have multiplied by the M, because in the case of the heat exchanger, my if the mass flows were very different, it might create a big difference, no? I don't think I don't think here is going to make a big difference, but. So this is the part where we would get like a different number. So like for turbine two, I got point uh, one seven eight. That would maybe be like a point oh three. It's not. You're not caring about that as much. No. If I see the process is correct, yeah. you know, and that you get a positive answer, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be that big, okay? So for the heat exchanger, what should we do? Let's see what I did here. So for the heat exchanger, the total change in entropy will be what? Change in entropy between what and what? Between, I don't know how to call it, but between two and three, no? Yeah? plus the change in entropy between five and six. So over here, I'm gonna use the mass flow because I think we need it. So it will be M1. And what should be the change of entropy for this one? If we use the CP, it will be CP log of what? T3 over T2 minus R log, oops, T2 minus R log P3 over P2 plus what? M5 CP log T6 over T5 minus R log P6 over P5. So from here, from here is multiply by M1. So more or less what do you get over here? You should find something in between. So you should find something between 3.06 and So basically, yeah, it's correct, on, on the range is correct. So basically, which one is the one that has the largest change in entropy? Mm -hmm. Turbine one, then is the heat exchanger, and then turbine two, which is what they get on the solution doing it the other way.
Okay, so we don't have time to do another problem. So guys, please, Thursday, come with questions. Okay? So I can answer your questions. Yes? The last part is to put them, to order them in rank. So we just say is the one that has the highest heat uh, entropy change is the turbine one then the heat exchanger, and then turbine two. That was the last part, okay? Okay, so remember, for the exam, I'm not gonna care that much about numerical values, but you need to show me that you understand the material, no? Okay, and if you want, Thursday, if you remind me, I can give you a sample test from another semester. That is. But again, I think I told you that I would probably go and try to pick problems from the homework of what we did in class, no? So if you did the homework and you understand it, it's not gonna be anything different. So one thing, guys, conclusion. I don't think I'm gonna be able to post the video because I think when I posted the video, I could see your grades. So. Oh, uh, you can't trim it? Uh, okay, I tried to trim it. If I cannot trim it, then you can't post it. I cannot post it. <laughs> but you were here, yeah. No, so, no, I'm gonna post the notes, the PDF. That's for sure. I'm saving the video, okay? All right. All right. So you got a bit early. Please, guys, study for Thursday, so that you can make. We can get the most out of the class, okay? Before the exam.